And now let us get, though, to our mortgage story. It is the top story of the session for the U.S. markets. Rates are going up. Certain loans are now completely unavailable to some borrowers. Diana Olick in Washington with that part of the story. And also with us, two men in the midst of the mortgage mess. Greg Sucha is with Manhattan Mortgage, and John Soro is with North Atlantic Mortgage. We begin, though. The question is, are rates going up, or is this, you know, just a couple of banks making a decision here? And what does it mean, of course, for the consumer out there? Greg Socha is Managing Director at Manhattan Mortgage. John Soro, President of North Atlantic Mortgage Company. Diana also going to be with us uh, for this roundtable. All right, well, it's good to have all of you with us. And uh, let me begin with you, Greg. You know, I, I, we're now getting uh, all sorts of emails from people, obviously, verifying it of different banks uh, taking certain types of loans off the table, like Diana was talking about with uh, Wells Fargo and Wachovia. Are, are we right now starting to see a dramatic change? I think we are. I, I think uh, because of everything that's happening in the market today, even the smaller lenders that we weren't anticipating, the, the small portfolio lenders, the story of mortgage today just stopped lending on to their Altay platform. Um, this week earlier, again, Wells Fargo did the same thing. Bank after bank is one by one. They're, they're limiting, limiting the, the programs that they're, they're uh, allowing borrowers to take advantage of. John, what we're seeing here when Diana was talking about Wells Fargo, uh, it looked like just over the past couple of days a 12% increase in the rate. They're putting it up to 8% for a jumbo, you know, people with loans of what, more than $417,000. Is that really the market out there that we can see a change in mortgage rates of 12% in 72 hours? You know, I think it's a temporary situation. What's happening is the uh, secondary markets, which is the markets that buy these loans, um, they're getting spooked by all the attention that this market is getting at this time. And so what they're doing is they're trying to protect themselves going forward, whereby they're charging a higher rate to cover the problems they've had on past loans, but also to help them with uh, covering, um, you know, any other defaults going forward as well. Added to that, and I think Bob Bassania uh, mentioned it earlier today on the show, that the CDS, the credit default swaps, which is a form of insurance for mortgage-backed securities, mm -hmm. also got more expensive by about a half a percent or so. So all of these costs are adding into the rate, and so the lenders are trying to protect themselves. But this is, this is probably going to be a very temporary thing, and this market's going to work itself out. Diana, how, when you say a temporary thing, when you're talking to mortgage brokers, obviously we, we've got one here as well, but what are you hearing in terms of on the mortgage, the lender side of things? Are they starting to become afraid and just clamp down on credit altogether, whether they should be or shouldn't be? They're just too afraid right now to lend. Well, they've only got the certain rates to deal with, and the brokers are telling me that their business is way down in just the last couple of months. I spoke to one broker who said 20 to 25 percent down, and especially in the alt A category, which is the one that a lot of these folks are worried about. But these gentlemen are talking about going forward into the markets, and they, maybe this is temporary because the banks are pricing that in, somehow worried about the future. Well, let's remember that the bulk of all these adjustable rate mortgages that are resetting to higher rates, the tip of that doesn't hit until October. We're going to see the peak of those. So we really haven't seen the worst of it coming. Uh -huh. These guys are right to be a little nervous about this because going forward, it's not going to get much better on the foreclosure scene. It's going to get a bit worse before it gets better. It's can, interesting. Can yeah, I, those, yeah, go ahead. Can I just say something about that? You know, all this talk about the adjustable rate mortgages resetting, here's something that's not talked about in this marketplace. One of the things is that we're not seeing a rush to bang down our door to refinance adjustable rate, adjustable rate mortgages that are coming up for reset. And I'm going to tell you why. Adjustable rate mortgages, even though they have an introductory rate when the person takes the mortgage out, most of the time they're qualified at a much higher rate, what we call the fully indexed rate. And that's a rate that's not so far off where we are today. And so, therefore, these people can afford the payments on those mortgages. See, I'm, I have to disagree, though, because I'm hearing a lot of these are not qualified, and that was the biggest problem. Now, when you apply for an adjustable rate, yes, they're definitely qualifying you at the full rate, but that wasn't what was happening two years no, ago. No, i got to disagree with you the there. i, I got to disagree. I mean, there were... There were maybe a few lenders out there that were qualifying people at the interest-only payment, but most of the big lenders were using a fully indexed interest rate to qualify. I don't know about that. Chase just today just announced had an announcement that said that they are changing the way that they are looking at their interest-only mortgages, mm -hmm. that they are now, as of today, qualifying them at the fully indexed rate. Mm -hmm. they well, can have, look, and that's just that's Chase. Greg, well, that, how yeah, is your Chase. business right now? Personally? Yeah. Actually, fantastic. Lucky okay, well, hold say. on. Hold on a second. I've just heard all this doom and gloom. You say business is fantastic. You're a mortgage broker. What's what's good? <laughs> well, my uh, my business is in Manhattan primarily, huh. the Connecticut tri-state region. Yeah, there and you have it. New the York, top part, of the market. Exactly. So, in the grand scheme of things, Manhattan is in this 
tiny bubble, if you will. But I don't, I, I don't think that the all tape specifically is going to really impact impact Manhattan uh, rate uh, scenarios. But what will impact the Manhattan mortgage uh, scenario or Manhattan purchase scenario is uh, the, the higher rates. A lot of people will be forced to use the adjustables. All right. Well, you know, this is very interesting. Thanks very much for joining us, Diana, of course, and Greg and John. Thank you for being with Welcome. us both.